Good afternoon, everyone. Day 22 of the 30-day creative challenge. Day 22, painting considerations. One moment as I turn off the Facebook uh, sound collection. It's always important, as I've said in other videos, to have copyright uh, sound all aligned so that videos and text and that kind of thing don't put us in Facebook or YouTube uh, prison. <laughs> so day 22 and uh, we are going to explore cons uh, painting considerations. I bring inspiration into your day by looking at the various sorts of things that we can do at home. We have all this time at this moment to concentrate on our families and have more time for us. I'm thinking that leadership moment is actually leader art or leader's art. And so therefore I bring you portion of the leadership thinking which is tied into the art. And that thinking comes to thinking about once an artist always what is it? What is that caption say? Once a starving artist, always a starving artist. What a, what a paradigm. So what's keeping keeping um, us from China, China? What's keeping us from our financial abundance as creative people? For myself, I looked at mindset limiting mindset. Now, the starving artist, the thought around that started when I was really young, drawing pictures and telling my father, my late father, that I wanted, to, I was aspiring to be an artist and um, the world would know me and that kind of thing. And I was busy coloring pages and his, his first reaction was from his own mindset, and that was, girl, you're going to have to have another, you're going to need a living. You're going to make, an, you're going to need to make a living, and that's going to have to be around career. You'll first have to do a career, and then you can do your art whenever you want to, because you need a backup. And how many of us have heard that? So changing that limiting mindset has been a process all my life. And I've come to this one thinking, is that financial abundance is mine as an artist or a creative be being at all times. And looking at that thinking and reminding myself each time that I think that think financial or think that art doesn't align with any of the things that I'm doing. And I smile because that is a limiting mindset that has taken its place in my thought process for a very long time. So when you start to recreate your thinking from negative or that limiting mindset that was set say at four or three years old or five and then you look for how long that it has been a belief, a part of your belief system. So that part of my belief system had taken hold way before I hit 30 and I didn't realize that in order to protect myself I made excuses around a lot of different things. Here's something to think about. Almost every advance in art, cooking, medicine, agriculture, engineering, marketing, politics, education and design has occurred when someone challenged the rules and tried another approach by Roger Von Oit. That is in the Law of Curiosity in the 15 Laws of Growth by John Maxwell. Why do I read the John Maxwell or why is it important? Because he is the leadership, number one leadership guru in North America who's wrote over 77 books all around personal development and growth when, it, when we're talking about being the, um, the thinkers, the leaders 
in thinking and success and and he gives us examples of how to how to change those things along with some other people in the industry in that thinking industry and at this time when it comes to how things were once done and i'm sure you're with me on this a lot of us will agree that the way things are way things have been in the world in the last month have been really challenging and difficult right at this moment we don't have the biggest option to go stroll through the um, the malls and touch and feel just because I want to this is this is an example of one exact one of my examples of going to the mall is because I like to look touch and feel whatever it is that I'm going to buy whether I need it or not that was something I saw on social media and I had a good chuckle because it's so true. Or going to Tim Hortons and meeting a friend and, and or there, I'm sure you could think of quite a few different things that we did from conferences to events to sharing ideas at a mastermind collectively in one room. All of that has moved online. And that's where things have, have they really changed? Teaching online? A little. Those of us that have developed platforms have just silhouetted or, or moved into teaching online. This is, this is myself. I now teach online and I'm still learning. And a lot of us are thinking if we're bookkeepers or if we're fitness, fitness um, people or cooks, if you think about the capacity of online, bringing yourself online, really what was ha occurring for me was the biggest problem I had as a creative person or an artist was getting myself out of the way. And that took a bit of time. The way to get myself out of the way, you're probably wondering what the call to action is when you get yourself out of the way. Think of one, make a list. Six different things that you could do and if you only come up with three, that's great. Maybe if you're, you can't make the decision, put the three in a jar and just select one. And the next, the third step is the plan or the thought that you were gonna do read it and then do it that's it no thinking about time resources get your iPhone out that's where I learned from some of the greatest mentors on on social media they give free tips like this how to pop up your iPhone mine's taped to the recording stand right now because <laughs> I broke the iPod holder and it still didn't stop me masking tape goes a long way. So, one, two, three. One, make a list. Cut it up. If you have six items, you have six items or three, put them in a jar or get one of your family to draw it. Draw it. Then read it. Step four, do it. Just do it. I'm going to tell you a little story about what I learned doing it because I wanted to increase, I wanted a hundred perfect people. And the lady that I follow right at now at the moment is Rachel Miller and she has some great spectacular tips, but the tips don't work unless I work them. And the one way that I knew that engagement would work is by getting getting, getting going, do it. And I come up with all kinds of reasons why not to come on here every day. And I thought the one way I'm going to get myself on here is to do it 30 days continuously at a specific time and no breaks on the weekend. No. And at first, the first seven days, just whoo, the middle, I could feel my mindset. Okay, I can do this. 
This is day 22 and I'll say the last four days that I could feel that limiting mindset loosening up. Because I'm going, I'm running out of content. That's, that's the resource dilemma, right? Not enough resources. I went, ah, oh, isn't that interesting? And then I realized that this jewelry box I could do in five or four series. Do a series and break it down in chunks. So here's something that I learned, and it's one thing I thought of per day. Um, there's not 22 of them yet, but I will possibly give you a list at the end and tell you maybe what I'll do is what my biggest takeaways were, my biggest success, and uh, what I could do better. That's how I will deliver it on day 30. Okay, so... Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, what I learned, I thought this was part of it, but I didn't know that you could use pencil crayons to paint wood. I had no clue. I learned that yesterday. I went, wow, sad. And I wouldn't have learned it had I not be looking at various designs and techniques and exploring beyond my creativity and what I know because part of the reason of growth and my topic is law of curiosity is to ask is there more what could I do better is there something else and that's a question I ask is there something else which is aligned to why why do I always do my art just in in acrylic on these jewelry boxes that's important because I'm going to give you four or five different techniques for this for this uh, jewelry box in just three minutes. Let me run through a couple of more. I broke my my iPod stand and I was I was like, where am I gonna find another way like that? But I found a different way when, like I said, I looked at I could be red green sister, I tell you, except for I'm not using duct tape, I'm using masking tape. It's come in so, so handy. This roll used to be huge. I've used it for everything in my online demonstrations. It's holding my phone right now. I found a better way to position the iPhone with that masking tape. I broke it because I was trying to swivel ahead and it's cheap plastic and poof, it just broke right off. Fewer people are reached when I use the eCam. This this uh, this platform here is called eCam Live. I reach fewer people on Facebook. However, my engagements are higher, and what we want is a higher engagement. We want eyes on our stuff, but the higher engagement we have, and this is a tip from Rachel, means the more interaction you're getting from your audience. That's important when you're building courses and uh, when you're teaching online. Otherwise, like at times I feel like I'm teaching to the air, but that's good because when I am master, when I master the online presence, I'll be okay with whoever comes to visit. Okay, the next one is the YouTube videos don't get viewed unless your thumbnails are interesting. This is where I'm starting to learn about who I'm marketing to. Like the, the bright pinks or the soft pinks are for the young women around 32 who are who are exploring and doing various creative art forms. And uh, there are men too, and they like the leadership component of this YouTube, of the YouTube leadership moment. So that's a little tidbit. And on YouTube and Facebook, hashtags are important for your videos because they'll just get lost in the stream and this is something that I have watched my numbers go up when I put the right hashtags in. 
always do a script first. Hook, story, and I've learned hook, story, offer. Because you're going to understand what a hook is and how to tell your story and tie it in. Offer is, is your sales marketing strategy. And I wanted to show you my little book. I script it. Yeah, it's by Scribbles. But every day. And I also learned in the last little while that you could take your videos, drop them in your software. I use Camtasia. Take out the video, save your audio, and send it to a script translator. Audio to script. Takes, puts the E into effort, but easy. Instead of this thing about thinking smarter, not harder, is so important. Because I like to do a lot of different things and while I, I, I look at it, typing, retyping, like this script that I have here, I'm retyping. Now all I need to do is just edit the script because that's something that I do have to do after I type it out and get it read, the PDFs ready. This is going to be a teaching, it's going to be an additional resource for me someday. So with all that covered, what I covered with you today is a short story on creativity, a quote, and um, what, what I've learned so far in 22 days because I asked, why do I do that this way? A creative law of curiosity and how to better myself as a, an artist, not just an artist, a creative person who's in consulting. I also coach. These tips have taken me so far in the last 22 days that I, I challenge you to do the little exercise that I shared with you. And we are going to get into the into what I've done with the uh, jewelry box. Okay, painting considerations. I'm going to bring you down to... Doo -doo. Okay, here's the box, and I have this, like I said before my other videos, a little bit of a space to demonstrate to you. This is what I've come up with. The box is complete, and uh, I don't want to bump the camera, so... What I'll do is I'll, I'll give you a better look at it. A better look. I'm going to move this on a picture. Yeah. It's going to sit front line and center. And you have on the sides the roots. I still have to do a touch up on the roots there. So what we covered was the burning. The inside isn't done. I'm doing that today. But we uh, looked at the burning and, and the fabric and the paint work, painting the inside. And then I wanted to talk to you today. Day with part three is about the painting. Now, to, in order to get <clears throat> to get the uh, this is acrylic paint, and I'm tapping that so that you could see. I'm going to put this up here. In order to get that watery, that very pastel look, I drop water into here. And then I just take a little bit, start with a little bit, like thin this color out a little, right? Okay, I'm going to demonstrate on a piece of wood that I get have ready for you. Let's say we want to do this. Oops, I'm bouncing. Okay. 
it's a bit of a watercolor. You want to do that uh, a little stronger. Then mix it a little stronger. Like add more color to the water, watery base. Now this is acrylic paint. You can do this staining is what I call it. You can make this a solid paint if you want and just do apply straight on acrylic but for an early spring I like the soft tones. Um, you may like the bold color. I also saw something that piqued my interest and it just uh, it, I'm just pulling out my okay this is pencil crayons and uh, I see I didn't I'm imagining I want a turquoise so turquoise is generally a blue green you can use pencil crayons like you would on a piece of paper my suggestion would be to to paint it in to get the uh, pencil crayon on oops it's running into that wet orange my bad we'll just uh, go over here and you do the next color on top And you can continue to layer. As such. I'm showing you what it looks like. It looks a little mucky because I got the orange in there, but if you're this is the piece that I'm looking at. And this is pencil, pencil crayon, right? The pencils, colored pencils, sorry, pencil crayon, colored pencils, blah. You can also stain this with tea, soak your tea bags, and uh, when you have the tea ready, when it's cool enough, you can also stain the background with tea bags. Coffee. You can also use your coffee grounds, what's left over, soak them for a few minutes, and that dark colored coffee will uh, give it sort of this effect. You don't need the expensive um, stain from Home Depot or anything like that. You can use coffee or tea. You can use grass clippings from your yard when the grass shows up by just simply bringing your tea, uh, put your grass, uh, about a handful in about one or two cups of water, bring it to a boil, shut it, and then strain your grass. And ta-da! You can also coming back up. So there's grass. The same thing with dandelions. You can get that initial yellow dye from your dandelion, same thing, handful and a couple of cups of water, bring it to a slow boil and then you have either, it's sort of like a greeny yellow tint. I can go on to, uh, uh, I'm thinking of it, it won't come. There's yellow dyes, there's red dyes, there's, you can go natural when your garden comes in. You can use uh, food coloring. Food coloring Easter is coming another nice way to share the Easter with your loved ones is doing some art art with them and so I covered pencils stain tea coffee grass flowers acrylics watered down uh, and food color I hope you found this interesting and um, inspiring like I did I'm going to go away and finish this box today, the inside, and uh, tomorrow I'm going to talk about final touches with the jewelry box. The final touches, I'm going to share one technique with you, and 
this will help you present um, present a, a, vis a box that looks like it's been bought from the store. However, it's not store. It has all our love and attention in it. And um, yeah. Any questions? You see the comment below? Please drop them. If you've liked this, please like, thumbs up, share it. It helps get to others to experience what I'm doing in this 30 day creative challenge. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at day 23. Woo! Love you all. All right. See you tomorrow.